I think what I'm gonna do, they, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna kind of show my R Studio instead of the already rendered uh, Porto document because then I can like uh, hit run and you can see it and if you need to change anything. I think that's a little bit, maybe that might be a little more interesting than just going through the, the, the words. So, Oh. All right. So right now you should be seeing my R Studio ID. And I have the rendered version here. Is it too small? Maybe I should just quick close this the viewer. Oh, it looks okay to me. Yeah, same here. I don't know if you guys, yeah, I I've gotten complaints because you know when you have a bigger monitor, it's uh, on this, like a smaller screen. It kind of sounds really tiny. Uh, so this this is chapter ten. It's about essentially grouping, like aggregating um, data um, with the different group operators and um, functions that you can use to do grouping. Um, so am I still here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I saw my little my little face kind of froze up, but um so this he he mentioned Wes mentioned in, in this chapter um he referenced the um split apply combine um method that Hadley I think writes in the advanced star I don't remember which book but that's that's kind of the the outline that is followed throughout this chapter. So like how to just kind of split your data into the groups that you need and how to apply functions over it and then recombine them to make new data. Um, some of, I guess, the things that you have to remember in this chapter, at least with Python, I have to do regularly is to note the, di the different indices. So axis index and axis columns, um, if you want to do the rows versus columns. That's something I, I constantly forget. So what I'm going to do in this section is I'm going to read in data from um, outside, again, instead of using the, the book's data. Um, this is Titanic. Um, what did I hit one? Uh-oh. Yeah, and I think your video, at least for me, your video is frozen, but I can see you moving on the screen and hear you perfectly well. Yeah, I, let's wait, my, it's it's like literally the same for me. Okay, so yeah. stop and then okay. read again. Video. Hello. Hi, Sean. Hi, so Lena. I started, and then for some reason, my video just went black. So I was having a little technical difficulty, but I think I can probably still share screen even if you don't see my face. So okay. let me see if I can try now. And this wasn't running. Um, let me just go to source. And then. Does anyone know the, the command for running the whole chunk? Instead of line by line with Corto? Or does you guys just hit the play button? <laughs> All right, anyways. So this, um, this data set has five, uh, that's not right. 
Is it only? Oh, yeah, that is right. Actually, sorry, I forgot. I, I saw the head. It's been a long day. So there are twelve columns in this data set. Um, we have some identifiers like the passenger ID. We have a variable called survive, whether they survived or not. It's binary. The class of their ticket. There's one, two, and three. The amount that they paid for their fare. The specific cabin um, type um, and different codes, um, along with as long with like the 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 person's age and their name. So the most basic thing that we can do is utilize the group by function. Command shift enter. Oh, I did command enter. Let's see. Okay. That was only one line, but let's see. So um, we're creating this new object called group, which is using the group by function that takes in um, your grouping variable and what you want grouped. So I'm saying that I wanna group the ages by the class. So if I use the describe function and describe basically does, um, I think very similar to what summary does where it kind of for numeric variables tells you like all of the min, max, mean, standard deviation, things like that. So you can see that for each of the three classes, you have all of this descriptive information on the ages. So in first class, it makes sense that the average age is older than third class. So you have people that were like working um, or got free tickets, they were younger. All right, so now what if I want to group by multiple um, columns? So this time I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm going to group by uh, sex and class. Um, and all you do for this one is that you have to pass in to the group by function, instead of one variable, you pass in a list of variables. So command shift enter, yes. So now you have that more like um, nested grouping. So it starts with the outside first. So we have sex is our first grouping and then class. And so now we can see that um, there are there were more there were older men. The average age was about forty one, and for women is about thirty four for first class and so on. Um, so there, he did mention in this book that there are different kinds of objects. So there is a series group by object um, when you are grouping multiple. Uh, multiple, grouping by multiple things, but you can also create a hierarchy and create what's called a multi-index object. Um, sorry, multi-index is when you have the two in the different order, but you can also create a hierarchy. That's what I meant to say. So um, let's see where we, so we can pass in a different way to do this. So this it's essentially what we just did, but the syntax is a little different. So we have Titanic, group by, P class, mean. Um, and this time we're not specifying what age, we're specifying um, all of the variables. So, and notice that it only gives you, because we're calling the mean function, it's only gonna give us the numeric variables. Obviously passenger ID doesn't really mean anything to us because that's really more of a, um, and more, it's just really the index variable. So similarly, if we do two keys, we pass it in as a list as well. So whenever you pass multiple items to the group by function, you're gonna have to do it in a list. So similarly as above, then you can see for everything, um, the average fare for women in first class was $106 versus men in, in third class was $12. Now we can do um, we can do what's called iterating over groups, and this is I think for me was more like something like passing into map or any of the apply functions um, because even though I probably I wouldn't do it this way you say for thing one and thing two and the group in group by P class and sex. So it's these, for each of these, print the name and uh, print each of the things 
and the group it belongs in. This is kind of long, so um, more for like visualization. There it goes. So you can see for the first, first thing it prints is the two things. So that's one female. And then it's going to do the same, one male, two female, two male. So for each of the groups, it's going to, it's going to print out um, the data. So all the, fem the females in first class, all the males in first class. So you can essentially group uh, out your variables, I mean, your data in this way. It might actually be convenient if you need to make uh, split your data into multiple data frames. Let me just clear this output. I don't really know how to condense and use the print functions. All right. Um, this method is a little bit more convenient. So you can do the same thing, but in line. So you say name um, in the group for name, group in Titanic, group by P class. I think we've talked about this already in one of the previous chapters. Um, when you iterate, so you, there's a way to do it in line. So this basically creates a dictionary called pieces and it does the same thing. So you have your key is the name and the, and the value is the group. Right, the next thing in this section is selecting a column or a subset of columns. Um, we can actually use uh, the group by function to do that. So in this example, we have uh, P, uh, class and sex as our grouping variables, and we're going to get the mean age. So we've seen this already before, but it was in the context of I think the describe function. So now we're just singling out age itself. So you do as you would normally do because this actually this uh, returns a data frame. You would subset it with the double brackets as you would any any um, data frame. Um, and then I I noticed that there was a little that these two things do the exact same thing but the syntax is a little bit different. So you can basically go ahead and um, subset your data based on the column that you want, so age, and then apply group by and, and the mean function, or you can do what we had just done and you can group by um, class and then subset that to just have age. I think there was some mention of performance, but in this context, I don't think it really matters. All right, so another method of grouping is using dictionaries and series um, versus just values. So I couldn't figure out how to do this with the Titanic data. So I went ahead and used uh, what was used in the book for this. So what we're doing is we're just creating a random data frame um, that has uh, columns, A, B, C, D, E, the indices for the, this data frame is actually going to be people's names. And then the value for each of these um, columns is just going to be some random number um, that follows this distribution. Um, and then if, to kind of see what that looks like. So I do a command shift enter, but then it runs, but it doesn't. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't see this, sorry. Um, so what we're doing here is that we are, um, for demonstration, he put in some missing values um, in, place of in place of the numbers to see how group by handles missing variables, which is really important. So um, we're gonna use this mapping. I think we've also done this in a previous chapter where we pass in a dictionary with key values. So we are basically saying that um, a, B, C, D, E is equivalent to like red, uh, blue, orange, like these colors. Um, they belong to this category. So you have the name and then the group it belongs to. Um, and so you can pass that dictionary as we have before to the group by function, but specify that the access you want to, um, and we're specifying here the access, access we want to group by is the columns. So if we do that, you can see that it's going to apply a grouping variable and 
And it's only going to include blue and red because we have um, missing values for the rest of them. So uh, let me see what the forgot to include here. We can just do people, right? And so you can see that like for B and C, there's some missing values for Wanda. And so B and C are in the red and blue group. Um, and then also there was F. Where did the other one go? A, B, C, D. Oh, sorry. Um, F is part of the mapping, but F doesn't exist in the data. So it doesn't throw an error, it just ignores it. And it returns um, the, the values uh, for blue and red because that's the only ones, the, those are the only grouping variables for A, B, C, and D and E. So it does, I think if I remember correctly, it does handle the missingness, the like missing cell with mean. All right. Um, so another way you can group. So this chapter basically covers all the million ways that you can split and group your data. So um, one way is by passing in a function instead. Um, so in this example, I, I'm going to revert back to the Titanic data and uh, use a lambda function to see the um, whether it passes this test. So it basically just returned the sum. This is really meaningless, like the, this is just for demonstration purposes, but all of the indices that are even, so that's about half of our original data set, and then it just took the sum of all of the numeric variables for each of those. It was just for demonstration, doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but notice how um, when I pass in the full uh, data set instead of a specific variable, it performs on the index. So what gets passed into X is the index itself. But what you can do is now you can group by index levels. So there is um, that multi-index array that I mentioned earlier. And also if you want to include hierarchy, maintain a certain hierarchy in your data. So um, I'm also using the, the data from the book for this one because um, that really so I couldn't figure it out with the, with the Titanic data. Um, all right, so we use that multi-index. So from the pandas, we have a multi-index. And then you say um, from arrays, and you pass in an array of your, um, uh, the arrays that you, that are in your columns. And then you add that to our data frame. Um, and add some variables. So uh, I mean, some numbers from the um, I follow this distribution. So this follows the hierarchy that uh, the letters come first, and then followed by the numbers. But at the end, you still have four um, uh, four by four. Um, but it's just now grouped. Oh, four by two and two. Anyways, <laughs> um, what was I? Yeah, okay, so what you can do now is that we have this data frame that has uh, the multi-index, uh, some hierarchical index. You can specify what level you want to group by. So in this one, I'm saying that I want the first level. So it's gonna do, a and B. So in the for in the step, A the letters come before the numbers, so it's going to do the sum of um, each of those. All right, that was the all the first section on basically how to split up your data. Now this is, um, I guess, applying and combining part. Um, uh, hi, Leila. Can you okay. edit? Add a little bit of the screen size. Um, 
Uh, you want me to make it bigger? Yes, I had okay. to bring my glasses, but still, I yeah, okay. <laughs> um, let me just let me. I'm not using the viewer, so I'm just going to push it away. Bye. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so uh, where was I? Um, all right, so for the section ten point two, the aggregation functions. There are like a lot of ways um, to optimize and that's in the book. I just included like a screenshot here. Um, I didn't go over all of them. There was a lot of examples you can find, but I just highlighted some ones that um, I think are really useful, but also some ones that, uh, some examples that I think are a little bit more practical. Um, all right, so like I said, we've already used mean and sum a bunch of times. I think that's what he used in the book. So I just passed in some other um, functions. So we're going to use that, uh, the class variable again as our grouping function, but now we can specify which uh, functions we want to aggregate with by passing in, um, by attaching the aggregate or AGG uh, function and the list of the functions you want. So mean, standard deviation, and account. So now it's going to give me all of the variables, the numeric variables, and it's going to give me the mean, the standard deviation, and the count for each, grouped by class. Yeah, so it's, it's warning me that these variables can aggregate successfully because they're strings. Makes sense. Um, like I said, I wouldn't do this uh, if I just want the mean, standard deviation, things like that, because this is already kind of included in the describe function and you get more information that way. Um, like in, in R, we can also do apply, apply these aggregation functions on, over columns instead of rows. So for example, um, we now, let's say we're gonna create this new variable called percent paid. And that's going to be the fare uh, that somebody paid over the total fare for the, all the passengers. And if we do that, oh, I forgot to print. Let's just see what it looks like. It's really small percentages, so as you can imagine. Um, but now if we want to group that data, uh, that variable, um, or actually in this case, we're gonna do all of them, including percent paid by sex and class, we get females, the outer group class, uh, sorry, sex is the outer group um, class. And then I can see this new variable. And if we sum, across all of them, so all of these, um, uh, my train of thought, all of these numeric variables, uh, then you can see that women in first class uh, were about 34% of the ticket sales. Um, but realistically, I would have just probably, you know, subset the data just some percent paid, um, and fair because the sum of age and survive, well, survive actually makes sense too. There are 91 women in first class survived. Obviously the numbers in, um, in first class were higher, but you get, you get the point. Um, all right, so there is a way that you can also pass in names um, and he was making a reference to the lambda function. I think what he was saying is that lambda function kind of does something similar under the, under the hood where um, it passes the, um, the thing that you want to uh, apply, the, the thing you want to apply a function over um, and you can name it. Um, so you can do the exact same thing here. Uh, and you say, Let's take our already grouped uh, data frame, so a data frame group by sex and class, 
And now we're going to pass in the ag function and you still have to do a list, but now you do a list of tuples instead of a list of strings for just the, um, for just the functions as we've done previously. So if we do that, now you can see it's got a little bit, a um, little bit more like prettier names. I guess that's helpful if you're making tables. Uh, but the point here is that you have to start that you have to put in a tuple. And that's that's the point here. All right, so let's continue on. All right, so this is something that. I think also wasn't really covered well in that in the chapter, and that's doing multiple functions um, over one or more columns. So you can still use the aggregate function, but this time you use a dictionary. And in the dictionary, you specify what variable as the key, and then the, the function that you want to to um, use. And let's say I want to do uh, mean, min, and max for age, but only sum for fair then I would, again, like for the function, you have to pass in a list that's going to be the value for the key item age in your dictionary of things to aggregate on. I know that was a mouthful, but you can see here that um, we now have mean, min, and max for age and fares just a sum, which as I was alluding to earlier, uh, this is a little bit more meaningful than like some of having some of the other data. Um, all right. So the one thing that he made mention of is getting aggregated data without the, in, the row indices. And this is um, going to be kind of helpful because you can't see it in the preview here, but these are row indices. And often you want these things to remain variables uh, in your data. So you the only thing you do is the exact same thing, but you specify this option as index equals false. So when you do that, you now have sex and class as variables and, the, and uh, um, along with the other things. All right, the next section was 10.3 the apply, um, so just generally splitting, applying, and combining. So we are going to use this function um, to get the min, the max, the count, and the mean of whatever group is passed into the function. And that's really as simple as you would do normally in an apply function where you go ahead and you define your function and then you apply an array or list over that function. But this time you're passing in a grouped, uh, a grouped object. So that ends up being, oh, that didn't run. Dropping nuisance columns. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's going to return for the, for the each of the classes. So all the data for first class, all the data. I mean, all the stats. Sorry, the min, max, count, mean for second class and for third class. It's throwing this error because you see, like, there's a <laughs> there's names here that doesn't make any sense. So it's warning me that um, to only pass in the right columns uh, and then it's gonna become a type error. Um, all right, so there's another way to kind of handle the key group keys. There is um, group keys equals false. Sorry, these are not formatted properly. All right, so if you pass group keys equals false, it says that 
don't include the group keys in the resulting object. Group keys equals true, include the grouped keys in the object. And I think that's the default. Um, and then if you can also spy, specify first, last, whatever, uh, to include like the only the first grouping variable in the result. You can actually customize your data accordingly. So there are more examples of this. I just made note um, can be found in the book. There are a lot of examples. Um, but for the sake of time, I just kind of highlighted the ones I liked. Um, all right, so section uh, four was on pivot tables. Um, also a very useful way to summarize your data. And they're pretty easy to use with the pivot table function. Um, this is part of pandas. So like grouping, you're going to pass in a list of your grouping variables, which is going to be your, uh, you're going to pass as your index. And then the variables that, I mean, yeah, the variable that you want to perform your, your function on, which is fair in this instance, it's numeric, and you want to take the mean. And this is what you get. We've already seen this before. This is obviously um, a more simplistic example, but it, it is using real data. But at the same time, the point of this chapter is just iterate the same uh, outcomes in different ways. Um, yeah, so I made note here that this could have been done with group by as well. Whoops. Um, all right. There is an option here for margins equals true. And so you can include the totals. So down here, you, now you have all. I don't know. Um, I didn't see about the this these totals. So you have the column totals and the row totals. Um, but in this case, it wouldn't really make sense because why would you mix Asian pair? But maybe for for future for other things. Um, so with pivot tables, uh, you can do what is called um, a cross tabulation, and this is where, as as it sounds, you perform some kind of calculation as you are creating your table. Um, and this is also with the cross tab function. So pandas has a very nifty cross tab function and it has the pivot table function. Um, and in this instance, for cross tabulation, we are going to do fair and then um, cross tab fair with the class. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense, clearly, because there are uh, fair as a numeric, but let me just change this. I can easily change it to sex. And now we're going to get the frequencies of each sex in each class. So understandably, there were the most people in third class. So those were the main sections of this chapter, with, in my opinion, the, mo the main takeaways. It gets into the nitty gritty of some of these functions with different options that you can apply. Um, I think, I mean, I would, and I think you all would prefer to just um, reference the book for that instead of me going back through each one individually. Um, but I did go over one of the examples. So in the example, uh, there is how to, Fill missing variables, uh, missing values with um, a grouping, uh, something that uh, that results from a grouping. So we have um, this list of states, and we're going to create these grouping variables that is east or west. So we're going to create this uh, series that is applying a random number to each of the states. And then let's just take some of those and make them missing. So our data kind of looks like this. State here is just an index. Um, and we have Vermont, Nevada, and Idaho that are missing. 
Um, in a lot of instances, when you're working with missing data, it's really common um, to, well, instead of just omitting it entirely, um, is to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna tip my tongue. The thing you do to fix missing data. Oh, well. Impute. Impute, thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so there are like the most common imputation methods is just kind of um, filling it in with the group mean or some or whatever makes more sense. Obviously there are some more complicated methods to do this, which actually you could probably do um, in the same uh, way, but that obviously that could get more complicated. So in this um, this example, I am going to get the mean for each of the East and West. Um, so East and West have these mean values. And then all I'm gonna do is just now define this quick lambda function. So it just using the fill in a function, um, basically fill the uh, missing data here, the missing values with the mean of that. Um, and that would, yeah, that would fill it in. So this is just a, a quickie little function. And then we apply that function um, to our grouping, uh, the data we're trying to group by. So we have our data set, which is this, grouped by the group key, which is each state, and then apply uh, the fill mean function, which just really fills it with the mean missing variable. So now you have um, Vermont is now filled with the, the group mean here, and the uh, same with um, Idaho, because uh, depending on whether it's east or west. And that's the whole chapter. Are there any questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Does a quick question, um, if you don't mind, does that yes. filling in the means, like imputing the means, like that, does that change the answer to group the group by group mean thing you did above in line two sixty two? I wonder, or does it keep it the same? <laughs> Is that I'm just wondering if that's what the mean does to NAs? Why it's default, if you will? Um, I'm, I'm not sure I understand exactly, but. Well, before you ran with the NAs in there, you did the, uh, you did a mean by group, right? And you get an answer. It seems to just ignore the NANs maybe. Um, oh, here. Yeah, mm -hmm. but then you filled in the NANs. I guess that would change, the, maybe change yeah. the answer slightly. Uh, or um, not maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah, so it fits here. So you can see the mean number for States in the east was 0.6512. Sorry, this one. And then negative 2.88, which is filled here for Nevada, Oops, Nevada and Idaho. Right. So now I'm just wondering if you reran that line 262, mm -hmm. whether those means are should be the same, right? Because it's kind of yeah, it's independent. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> All right. I guess that's the point of filling in with the means. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I was just wondering, I, I was a little bit curious because uh, these also are filled in with the, the random um, function. So these would change if I ran this again. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, this sometimes uh, group file for the Python is a little bit confusing for me <laughs> because like many ways to do <laughs> this something, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's. It's not as readable as the tidyverse, but I think that goes for anything really mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> in Python. <laughs> yeah, so we have the next chapter, which is, I think, time series stuff, um, but we don't have a presenter yet. Um, so if anyone is, um, you know, time series um, is comfortable, uh, mm -hmm. sign up, please. <laughs> yeah, it's still, they can nobody sign up for the presentation. Yeah. So yeah, uh, thank you all for joining. And um, I think we have three more chapters to go, 11, 12, 
um, 13, uh, 12 is introduction to modeling with library in Python, then 13 data analysis example. And we all have the presenters for 12 and 13, only 11 that we need someone to volunteer. And thank you all for joining and uh, we see um, next week. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hope to see you on to sign up. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> all right. Bye.